Hello. All right. Good evening. Just making sure that all our settings are good here. Happy Valentine's. Happy Valentine's. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As you come on in, let us know uh, where you are watching from. Good evening. Let's go. right here okay okay good evening everyone trust that everybody is happy and blessed and enjoying today you know um we haven't started but um think the kind of things that we're going to share are going to be good for singles too so if you know singles or anyone who's interested in uh marriage Getting married one day, this would be a good one. Yes, they're, they're welcome. These singles, our single community is welcome to join in today. Uh, so, because, yes, as yeah. you come on, make sure you're sharing, uh, sharing the broadcast and, and like. Oh, yes. yes, we need that encouragement that you we know that you like yeah, us. We do this very well. Make sure <laughs> you subscribe, hit your subscribe, and of course, like this, uh, this video. And uh, yeah, let us know when you are watching from, how your day was, uh, any surprises or not. Um, I think we're just going to wait a couple minutes. We're going to start. Yeah, we're going to start right at nine. At so. nine, because it's going to. And if you're watching the replay, you know, uh, let us know. Uh, say just, just type replay uh, so we know when you're watching the replay. And then again, as you come on, make sure you are liking you are, and liking this video and also subscribing. Uh, and make sure you to, uh, turn on the notification bell as well um, so that you can be notified when we go live again uh, next time. Maybe next week or it might be before. But anyway, welcome this evening. We yeah. are happy that you are joining us on this Valentine's Day. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Well, hopefully, hopefully the couples are having a wonderful yes. evening. But we just wanted to just jump on here. You guys can watch it in the replay uh, as we talk about um, more, talk about intimacy overall. Yes. So we had a good day. We got my flowers behind there. Yes. We had our dinner together. Well, it took a lot of care. I went through a whole lot of flowers to pick those. Oh, you did? Yes, oh. it was a lot of flowers I went through to oh, pick those goodness. exact ones. I wanted to get just the ones that, sh that I knew you would like. Thank you. I so appreciate that. That's how. I appreciate it. You know, I think it's good um, in general because last week you were saying, you know, Valentine's not a big deal and they even only. And I see, that. brothers, I hope you know you can go back and look and see how I just played it off because I knew I needed the plan. Mm. Uh, no matter what she said, I knew that when the day came, she'd be looking at me like, What have you done for me lately? So, I don't know. I don't know. anyway, I was, I was kind of like, It's, it's so commercialized. Mm -hmm. Um, commercial, whatever you're gonna want yours. So. <laughs> I don't know. But then I read a blog and it just really convicted me that Valentine's is a preset date night for you and your spouse. No, it's preset date night. So don't play. Uh, if you don't, don't have any other play. date night, Valentine's can certainly be a date night. Or I date saw day, that whatever. set up a mile away. Oh, was no, it wasn't it was, set up. It was, it was, I was going to be set up. It was not. But seriously, I had like really zero ex expectation. Yeah, not... to, yeah. Oh, man, I did no look on my face. Fool <laughs> <laughs> was... me once. Shame on me. No, no, no. It was not, it was not a trick at all. Fool no. me. You, I mean, you, you can't fool me twice. <laughs> you just can't be fooled. <laughs> I guess you can't be fooled twice. Oh, 
Wow. Well, yeah. good evening. Let us know who you are on here. But we're going to get started. Yeah, let's jump into this. We're going to get started. It's 9-1-1, and we want to yep. make sure the couple's Because we're not going to be here all night. We got things to do. All right. Well, um, thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to connect with the couples. We believe, Lord, that your Holy Spirit is going to dominate the conversation. May everything be said and done to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you for joining us again. If you're on here, let us know uh, where you're from. And um, if you're watching the replay, Make sure you see you type replay and also make sure you subscribe and make sure you come on. But yes, we can jump right into it. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, what's the topic today? We're dealing with uh, how to unlock intimacy in your relationship. How to unlock? Intimacy. I like that. How to unlock? This, this so we're we're giving out keys tonight. Yes. There're gonna be some keys. Make sure you leave with your keys tonight. And I, I said before, we want uh, to encourage those maybe who want to be married one day. Mm -hmm. uh, you're invited to, uh, because I think that some of the things I said tonight are going to be edifying to you and they're going to give you some uh, important information on uh, getting to a place where uh, you're able one day to be intimate with someone. Uh, that is a man or a woman of God. So uh, there are some principles you need to know before, and you don't have to learn some things the hard way. And so we appreciate those of you who are single who are tuning in tonight uh, because you are going to be built up. Those of you who are engaged, this is going to be very important uh, for you. So, um, yeah, how to unlock the power of intimacy. Of intimacy. How to unlock the power of intimacy. It's interesting that we we are created to connect. We're cre created to be relational beings. Mm -hmm. And we all need intimacy. Uh, you can go back in the beginning where God says, it is not good for man to be alone. Mm -hmm. Right there in the beginning. God says it's not good. And we're not created. I mean, if you want to go crazy, uh, then just isolate yourself from all people and you'll find yourself crazy after a while. That's when you see people talking to themselves uh, because, and not just talking to themselves, but answering. It's not, I guess it's not crazy to talk to yourself, but when you answer yourself back, <laughs> I think you, that's where. Will you ask yourself, you know, comes to yourself and self answers. Yeah. <laughs> when you start getting all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, when you're too isolated. Yeah. Uh, so we, 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 we need intimacy. We're created for intimacy. We're created uh, to connect with, with, with others. And there's a frustration when there's a desire to connect and there's a desire to be closer, to be more open. And someone who is supposed to be connected with you is standoffish. Mm -hmm. You don't know what's going on. They're not talking. They're not sharing. Uh, they're separating, they're being to themselves on their computer, they're to themselves watching TV or mm -hmm. what, what on, women do. On the with, phones. Yes. Women are on the phones. Um, just I know what men do. So. Yeah, no, women are on the phones, scrolling on social media, yeah. uh, Pinterest for some, <laughs> some are shopping. Um, but I think certainly this the scripture in uh we talk about this this frustration scripture in Genesis two, Genesis two, twenty-four to twenty-five. It says, Therefore man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. That's a whole teaching by itself, mm -hmm. and they shall become one flesh. It says, and they were both naked, the man and his wife. That's good. And were not ashamed. So there's a sense that the intimacy we're talking about is the sense of being naked with one another and unashamed. Yeah, that's intimacy. Yeah. Because I, I know some people that they're just comfortable being naked. Uh, but there's a natural shame. <laughs> and, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> some people need to be ashamed. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, seriously. 
But uh, when they realized they were naked, they were ashamed mm. and they hid themselves. Uh, they were supposed to be intimate with God, but they separated. God was the first person they hid from mm -hmm. when they knew they were naked. And that openness, that trust uh, yeah. for, and I guess we're going we're gonna to circle back to that one. There, 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 there's a room. Yeah, absolutely. So well, no, maybe a working definition for intimacy is closeness, togetherness, okay. um, in a relationship. Like, really, there's where there is total access of a soul when I can get into, when there's a sense of being known. Okay. You know, I know someone and someone knows me uh, really intimately. He uses the word access, and that is a powerful word because intimacy it implies that access has been granted. Mm -hmm. Right. So we can be together in the same room, but access denied. Yeah. And you see that too. Yeah. yeah in, in I think in Vogue used to sing a song, never gonna, <laughs> never gonna get it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I hated that song. Yeah. I like, but I hated that song. <laughs> Okay. Anywho, that's so <laughs> negative. <laughs> but access is, is denied, mm -hmm. and many of us can be in relationship where access to intimacy is continually denied, and there's a frustration that naturally comes when yeah. you're created for intimacy and connection and communication, all the good stuff that comes with that. Absolutely, and I think I'm just gonna, you know. Um, Kind of run down what the types of you know the types sometimes of sometimes there's a reason why access can be denied there is and i think i think yeah we're gonna get into that yeah there, there could be a reason it, sometimes we want access into people's lives we want them mm -hmm. to give us the time of day mm -hmm. but they don't give us that kind of access yeah and we're frustrated mm -hmm. but there's sometimes a reason right so i think if i could just run down uh, types of intimacy. Sure, go ahead. You can do your own study on this types of intimacy. So there's emotional intimacy. Again, this when you're sharing one's feelings. Physical intimacy, we already know that. That's sexual and non-sexual touch. Intellectual intimacy, that's where you can talk about thoughts, passions, ideas, where you can really get into some deep thought. Um, okay, I was going to give this. Okay, spiritual intimacy. Again, that's, you know, uh, really when we start as love, love at the altar, is yeah. really to spark spiritual intimacy between husband and wife when you're coming together in prayer as you're reading the word of god and that's so needed because when that's not there in a marriage even though you have all the things going on everyone is getting along but you're not praying together you're not connecting with god together uh, if anyone in that relationship has a heart for god's highest and best mm -hmm. that person is going to be frustrated when there's no spiritual intimacy when we're not bringing god when we're hiding as a couple from God, mm, that's good. that is going to be problematic. Right. And last week we talked about the power of agreement. So you can look at the video from before we talked about the power of agreement. But certainly now, if you got two people who are lukewarm, they're not going to care. They're not going to care. Anymore. They don't have a heart for God. They don't want the anointing, the grace of God. They don't want Jesus. Then they're not going to care. They're not going to even notice. And they'll need the Holy Spirit to convict them that there's a problem. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we don't even realize that there's a problem with spiritual intimacy. Right. And sometimes the issues we're having in relationship is because we haven't come together as husband and wife. Again, there's this sort of power and agreement when we come together and we're able to identify the real enemy, knowing that we are not each other's enemy. Uh, that's really the tactic of the enemy to make us look at each other as over the enemy. So when there's when we come together and there's spiritual intimacy, we are able to really work through some of the issues that we are experiencing uh, in relationship. Uh, so there's recreational intimacy. And we have shared hobbies, interests, and things like that. Uh, functional uh, intimacy, where yeah. you're working in harmony toward you know maximum output. And then financial intimacy, again, this wealth building, um, budgeting, kind of working together on, on a financial plan. So just to kind of talk about generally, those, when we talk about intimacy, we're talking about the, um, those areas. But I think tonight we're going to be focusing more on the emotional intimacy part. Emotions. Emo Back there again, huh? <laughs> Okay, fine. All right, fine. Okay, we're we'll yeah. talking about intimacy in general. Right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, so let's talk about, you know, um, some of the requirements, you know, for, for intimacy. 
yeah, again, there are levels to this thing. There are levels to this thing. And uh, no, there's access that is can be granted based on uh, the permission that you give someone to come into your life. In other words, for some people, you let them know you can come so far and this is where you live and this is where we do relationship and we're gonna do relationship. Um, I like, we like to talk about the relationship house. Mm -hmm. And with uh, some people, I think this is really good for uh, those who are interested in, in being married uh, and even applies to, certainly to those who are, are married. Some people are married, but they're doing relationship on the porch. And that's that's really bad if you're married and you're doing relationship on the porch or or, or just in the well, it's very surfacey. Yeah. And you know what? I was I was I was thinking about this um a couple of days ago that uh for those of you who are not married yet or who are newly married, you know, one thing that my mother in law said to me as I was is is as you know at the start of our marriage, she said, Fiona, however things begin is how things will, will always be. So some of us begin marriage very separated. Our money is not together. Our social life is not together. There's no real intimacy. And then we find that 5, 10, 15 years down the road, you know, husbands and wives are frustrated saying, well, my spouse doesn't want to join me in doing things. My spouse is, you know, we live, we're living like roommates. We're not connected at all. It's like, I have to ask, how did things begin? It's so important that you set the right foundation of intimacy. So, uh, that, the so that's what happened with us. Because I, I noticed right away that as soon as I got married, it, it's happened during our engagement even, you fully engage in every aspect of my life. Yeah. At some point, sometimes it was, I mean, you came in the midst so that all my friends, and I guess you coming from a totally different setting, mm -hmm. you got connected with all of my friends. And so you got to see everything, all my interactions. And I was extremely comfortable with my environment and how I was functioning as a single man and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I didn't know anyone else. You brought me over here. Yeah. And, and then it's like... But in my, image, in, my, in my immaturity, I was thinking, okay, you be over there and you do you and I'm going to come and I'm going to do me and I'm going to get back to you. But mm. very early in our relationship, uh, you were right there. Yeah. And you were real calm about it. You're like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to bother you or anything. I'm just, you know. Yeah, well, it's, it's important. How the foundation that you said yeah. is so important. Because even the issues of passwords, I can't get into my husband's password or my wife's my wife's phone. That's like, levels of intimacy. It's like, how did you begin your relationship? It's so important that everything that you are naked and unashamed with each other. You see each other, you can go into each other's accounts, into the phones. I mean, yeah. how you begin is so important. So if you've set a foundation of secrecy, we want to challenge you today to change that. We want to challenge you to say, you know what? We want to become more intimate. Let's put all our cards on the table. Because what happens is we are playing this, this marriage, we're in this marriage game, but some of us are holding certain cards to our chest. We're not putting all our cards uh, on the table. And then your spouse is not feeling secure uh, in the relationship because they don't know, they don't know, they don't know what you're holding. They don't know what you're hiding. And so it's so important that you- Security is, a, is connected with intimacy. Mm -hmm. I, we we got to touch on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're talking about, you know, so the porch, you know, I just, I wonder that because I was really thinking about that, how we begin. So if we begin our relationship, uh, having a porch relationship where it's just very surfacy, uh, we don't, we don't really talk about, you know, our deepest desires. We're not sharing a vision. If you start your marriage. Yeah, because you're on like the porch. That, I don't fully trust you on the porch. Oh, no. People, and I might not like you all that. You, you have associates on the porch, mm -hmm. uh, people you see in the crowd. You right. kind of see them on the porch. You're gonna be, you, you, I'm gonna see you on the outside, and this is where you live. Don't call me. Right. Uh, don't text me. <laughs> right. uh, you know. You can just I, wave from the from the porch. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna see you when I see you. Right. 
It's like your neighbors. Yeah. You know, there's no real intimacy. You know, there. I had, <laughs> it's, it's, it's real, reminds me, I, one of my very best friends, uh, whenever I would come to his house, I, I would not ring the doorbell, be ready to go in. <laughs> <laughs> and he would see me on the porch and there was a screen door. And I would be ready to come in. You're like, no, 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 we're good. What's up? <laughs> wow. So wow, that's really interesting. I that, can learn with relationships. Yeah. Like that. And he's yeah. he's supposed to be my best friend. Right. But we all know. And I'd be sticking my nose. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be sticking my nose on the screen door, mm-hmm. and he'd be pressing my nose from the screen. <laughs> oh. Wow. Not letting me in the house. Yeah. Yeah. And because he, he didn't feel like being bothered with me that day. Right. And you know, and that means I'm sure at some point it made you think like, well, what is he hiding? You know, what's, what's, what's going on? Behind? What's so special about your house <laughs> right. that I can't come in? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so when couples do a relationship with, from the porch, you know, they can increase that insecurity. That's it, really irritating it, for a couple. Mm-hmm. Just like I was irritated as with my best friend. I come to your house all the time. Why Why are you not opening the door and letting me in? I'm here now. Yeah. And there's a frustration that kicks in where uh, we're, we're supposed to be together and you're staying there. And for those, and we talk to the singles, mm-hmm. uh, because for some of you, you want, you, you you might see someone that you're interested in and want them uh, to get to know you uh, a little bit better. You want to get to know them. And they're not giving you any access. access. Hmm. Uh, the porch is very surface. Right. The porch is very visible. A lot of appearance. Appearance, by appearance. matters. Mm-hmm. I'm going to look at you and judge mm. you from afar. Ooh. And if I'm yeah. interested in what I see, mm. uh, if I'm liking the vibes, then we could take this further. But if my curiosity is not sparked, I got no interest, I'm not interested in knowing more, mm-hmm. then we're good. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to leave you right there. And this is where the relationship is. And so any individual has the power. Uh, to grant access. It takes uh, one to grant access and it takes another one to come in. So. I think really on the porch talking to the singles, if you are in this constant friend zone or kind of the porch, we call it, you know, in our relationship house, we call it the porch. If you're, if the person you're interested in is, is constantly keeping you on the porch, you need to kind of you know, get the hint. Get the hint that this person is not yeah. open. <laughs> about, about, about Go to another door. porch. So like, like, like your friend, you know, you kept, you wanted to go in, you know, but he's like, no, you're not coming in. And for some of us, we keep kind of pressing our nose against this, this screen door and <laughs> the door is not opening. If the door is not opening, you know what? It's time for you to move on. Maybe go down, down the street. If they want to let you in, they will. They'll let you in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not complicated. Especially for dudes, it's not complicated for guys. Yeah. We're real simple on that line. No, come on now. I want to talk. Guys, come on. Come on. Come on now. Some, sometimes we kind of just string the woman along. If you don't want her or don't like her, or you're not about to open the door, just tell her, you know what? I see that you might be interested, but I'm not interested. Just tell her. It's sometimes not- with guys, there's an interest in her staying right where she is. See, that's wrong. And if she begins to that's move, right. then if a guy is insecure, Mm-hmm. You, you say no, no. Go back to the, the porch. I, I might possibly one day, yeah. when the situation is right, open the door. And he, yeah. a guy like that, is playing games. He's not serious. Absolutely. And, and so don't be standing there, ladies, on the porch, on the porch, year after year, year Waiting after year, seen. hoping. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes you you crack the door open a little bit, and you know, but the door is just really closed. Move on, move on. But guys, don't do that to the ladies. Now, you know, guys, if you're trying to get in there, uh, then you got to up your game. Uh, you got to up your presentation. See, yeah, there's something that's true. there's something that is 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 being uh, is oozing out of you, and it's an immaturity, or it's uh, uh, like you're not the kind of person that I would want to uh, come any closer to be seen anymore. Uh, I would be embarrassed. There could be something like that going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, about, oh, well, yeah, look at your whole yeah. uh, video. So, that, that, that part, part is a very surface um, level of intimacy. Uh, then, when the presentation is right, mm-hmm. when you know 
you got some stuff together. You present well. Now I'm interested in what you're selling. Now I'm interested. All right, I, you can open the door. Let's, let's talk about this further. And that's where uh, you get access into the living room area. And in the living room, uh, we can have a conversation. In the living room, we can talk. It's information gathering now. Uh, now uh, you're in a place where uh, we can get to know one another more. In every relationship, it's built. Some problem is that people go straight from the porch to the master bedroom. Ooh, yep. And you give access. I mean, you show your nakedness to people who have not gone through the porch, they haven't gone to the living room, they haven't gotten into the kitchen, and they, what, 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 what is this? You're going straight to the master bedroom? Yeah. What, what, what's, what's the deal here? And then when that happens mm -hmm. and the foundation is not there, mm -hmm. frustration now is now starting to kick in. Right. Because you brought someone into a space in your life that they're not qualified to be in. They haven't earned the right mm -hmm. to have that kind of access, but you've given away the access codes. Yeah. And now when you marry them, you've given away the access codes. Like the codes. nuclear codes, they can blow your life up. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> they're not yeah. supposed to even have those codes to that level to your life. They're not supposed to be able to create that kind of drama in their life. How is it that they got that kind of space when they were unworthy? No, the problem is with your judgment. The problem is with you have no, uh, you you have no defenses. Uh, levels of intimacy, levels of access are there for a reason, and those things have to be earned. Right. You don't just give them away for free. No. Yeah. If you've given away the access code, you married. You you walked down the aisle and you said, "I do." You give the access code. Yeah, I was talking singles. So talking to singles. Yeah. Now back to back to you. <laughs> back, yeah. back back to you. <laughs> oh, you're the, but, oh yeah. I gave away my access too, too quickly. I need to go back. No, you no, 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 no. That that was that the whole message. <laughs> that none of that message was for the married folk. That was that was talking to singles folk. Right. Now that you are there, you all have to work this out now with the master bedroom. Mm -hmm. You're you're in there, and you have to start to figure this out, and maybe go back, do some work on the foundation, uh, but figure it out, you must. Mm -hmm. And I hope that this, this, you know, yeah. this, this talk will help you. All right, let's get to work here. Yeah, so we went from the porch to the living room, now we're going into the kitchen. All right, talk about the kitchen. Kitchen is, it's where you as a couple, you don't, uh, you're not necessarily on a higher level of intimacy, but in the kitchen is a function room. Mm -hmm. You can do life together without truly being intimate. You can, all right. I'm gonna go take. I'm gonna go pick up the kids. Uh, you're going to make dinner. You know. Uh, yeah, it's a working relationship. Here. Right. It's like it's like you you have a great partnership, but there is no intimacy. There's no emotional intimacy. You can do things well. It's very transactional. You do this. I do this. You know. We're able to you know come together very well. We're able to talk, even talk about money and not yeah. <laughs> not hurt one another. People are doing what they're supposed to do. People, everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. But then um, after all the functions are done, there is no real sense of me knowing now you and you might be known. I don't want to downplay function. Mm, yeah. Because in the kitchen, you need to understand how to make things work. And that's when everybody understands their role mm -hmm. and their function in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Because we can't do the master bedroom properly if we have not mastered the kitchen, if we don't know how to cook this thing. Right. We got to know how the recipes work. We got to understand how... Uh, you know, each one is triggered and what causes them to uh, be edified and built up. You kind of figure these this stuff out yeah. and you work the stuff in the kitchen. Absolutely. And you talk about there's a recipe and the recipe that we have for marriage is really in the word of God. When there are specific roles that yes. the husband has, the specific role that the husband plays and the specific role that a wife plays. Got to get That's this. the recipe for success. Yes. I know my role in this relationship. I know my lane. We're different and we're united. We're one, but we have different functions. We have different roles, different responsibilities. We're working together. Right. But I understand that as the man, 
in this relationship, as the husband in this relationship, it is my job to communicate love in a way that she understands it. It's my job. You know, if I'm not loving her, uh, then nothing else is going to really work. Everything's going to start to shut down. Everything, the factory is going to start to grind to a screeching halt because this thing has to flow. This thing has to function. This thing has to work. And so uh, you were supposed to figure out your role even before you got married. Now that you're married, now you have to do a crash course to understand why did God make you the male of the species if you're a man and why God made you the female of the species if you're a woman. You have to understand as a, as a man, it's my job uh, to love, to cultivate, to protect, understand that God made in his creative order, made man differently than he made woman. Uh, he formed man first. First is responsible to serve. So as a man, when I understand my function, I understand it's my job to serve my wife. Because remember, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 20, when they're arguing about greatness, Jesus says, if you want to be first, you have to be the greatest servant. If you want to be first, you have to be the slave. So if I am the man in this relationship, I'm the husband, I have now become my wife's slave. <laughs> Jesus wow, that's good. is the firstborn. And what does Jesus do? Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. That's my job. Right. And and my job is to submit. My job is to follow help. your leadership. My job is to help you. And really that word help. I'm oh, you just about... cussed a bunch of women out. You cussed them out. <laughs> I don't want to talk about oh, they're getting they're starting to click oh. and they're just saying, I'm done with it. But really the word help. You know, it talks about it's it, the connotation is one of military might. So, in other words, as a woman, you're a strong I, black woman. As a <laughs> woman, <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna leave that one alone. But really, as a woman, I represent military might. You know, and I think God really has a sense of you. Know, well, I don't want to call it a sense of humor, but God knows what He's doing. He says, "Woman, I'm going to give you this military might, but I want you." then with all this military might, I want you to submit. I want you to follow leadership. So my role as a helper is now is to war against the enemy of our marriage. My, my job as a warrior, it really talks about helper is a warrior, that I stand guard even in prayer over my husband. I don't fight my husband. I'm standing together with him, but I'm standing there even as a as a. a an army, military, ensuring that there are no predators that are coming into my relationship, into our marriage. And really, even this intuition, the Holy Spirit that speaks to us, mm-hmm. military has to be, the military has to be aware of all the, of the threats that they are have happening. They have to have intelligence. Military they have to have intelligence, intelligence right. Absolutely. And that's why you have to be a woman of prayer. And then you also have to be, your eyes and ears have to be open because God shows you things as a woman. So that's my role is to be, you know, to represent the army, to represent military. So I have intelligence. I see what's happening. I don't allow the predators to come into my home. I don't allow if it's social media, if it's wayward friends, if it's whatever different habits. I stand God and I say, enemy, no, you're not going to. I stand God as, as, uh, as a warrior, as a helpmate. I mean, I could really preach on this. You're uh, preaching already. I can see you getting <laughs> worked up right now. I'm, you. <laughs> I'm ready to give you an offering. I'm telling you. Ro- and then, and submitting is respect. You know, God say, you know, the word of God tells us that wife, she must see that she respects her husband. And respecting again is that honor uh, as, as, as a head of, as my head, my husband is my head. I need to honor him and respect can look different in, in, in every relationship, but it's the way that I speak to my husband. It's the way that I address him. It's the way that I speak about my husband. It's the way that I treat him. Uh, I mean, that we can, we can hold, again, do a whole teaching mm-hmm. on respect, but you know, we have our books. So if you don't, you know, if you want to learn more about this, go into our books and read it. But when in this kitchen, there's functionality. We, and see, we and see, understand our roles. And if you well. don't know how to function, mm-hmm. you cannot enter into higher levels of intimacy because you know how to act. 
<laughs> you don't know how to function. Right. You're, you know, you're too disrespectful. And because you're too disrespectful, uh, because mm. uh, you don't understand the power of submission. Yeah, and the power of femininity, really. You don't, the power. The power. You don't know how to harness the power of feminine. You're trying to fight like a man. You're trying to think. Who told you to think like a man? <laughs> oh, with Steve Harvey. Where, <laughs> where, where is that in the word? Hmm. Wow. You're trying to, you're trying to operate and see. I know I can think like me. I don't need her to think. I don't need you to think like me. I can think like me. No. I, I need don't. help. And God has put something in you that mm -hmm. I need. Mm -hmm. That's why it's not good for me to be alone. I need help, brother. You need help. Stop. Let, let the pride go. Mm -hmm. You need help. Right. Help her. Help, help you. you. Right. Yeah. And so. Uh, I mean, we're talking yeah. about this intimacy because sometimes the, the husband wants help, but the wife doesn't know how to act. And more often than not, the wife is responding to the husband that is not functioning as God's love man. She, she, your, your wife wants to, she, she will respond to a man of excellence. It's interesting. God put it in the nature of the woman. Oh, I'm going to, this is going to get some folk mad. Uh, but God put it in the nature of the woman to respond to a man of excellence. Mm -hmm. Daniel was a man of an excellent spirit and he had purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. And so uh, when when a woman is around an authentic man of God, she will naturally respond to him. He is her natural example, and she will naturally respond to him. I'm just thinking, um, yesterday, when uh, my sister, we are celebrating her, and she had everything worked out. She, worked, she talked to the waitress ahead of time that... Uh, when the bill comes, give to me, I'm paying, I'm taking care of it. Uh, and she had it all worked out. We all came together. And there's something about me. When I am with my sisters, I'm taking out my sisters one on one. They never pay. I am, I am my father's son. They're, they're not going to pay. A woman is not going to pay. My sister is not going to pay. If I'm there, if we go out to eat, the bill is mine. Well, why are we on that? If you are dating someone and you guys are going Dutch, you know, so the man says, well, you pay your half, I, I, pay, I pay my half. That's not he's, the guy for you. He's not a man of excellence. No, no. And if, you, if he pays for you and he Run. wants something, if he pays for you and he wants something in oh, return, oh. that means you swipe left or swipe right and found him. Mm -hmm. You didn't find him uh, as a man that is seeking God because yeah. a man of excellence is going to protect you from fornication. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's going to protect you. Oh uh, he, he, he is mm -hmm. going to protect your, so that uh, if it doesn't work out because he's a man of excellence, it didn't work out, uh, you don't have to go to the altar and repent for giving your body to him. Mm -hmm. He's a man of excellence. I heard one man say, <clears throat> you know, he has a popular show. He says, he's telling the, he's telling the women, that when the man pays for your dinner or for your meal, that you ought to pay him back by oh. having sex with him. That's a, that's, oh. that's, that's a demonic teaching. And that's really what's out there in yeah. that society. And it, unfortunately, it's even in that the is church. totally. And see, now see, mm. different rules apply. Because if you're in the world, and that's the world, that's the rules of the world, and you're operating in the world system, then. You, you, you do that, then you have to operate in that system. I don't know how that system operates. That's the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the kingdom of light. Right. And so I'm talking about a man that is in the church, that's serving God. Uh, this, that's, that's a different man. I'm not talking about uh, the person who is successful and has a lot of money out there in the world that's not living for Jesus and is going straight to hell. We're not talking about him because he's going he's, he's gonna to lead you into sin. But a man of excellence is going to lead you into righteousness. Right. So I'm sorry, I got, I got a little emotional there. Uh, that that, it's, that, it's, that it's stuff a, ticks me off when I see men abusing women. It's happening. And, and this is really yeah. sophisticated prostitution. Because if I pay for your meal, 
then I get to sleep with you. That's yeah. a sophisticated process. So ladies, don't allow yourself to be prostituted. Yeah. That's exactly what's happened. Go buy your own meal if, if, you know, if, if it's that Absolutely. bad. Absolutely. Don't let don't let a man pay for you, and then you have to sleep. But with let's get back, anyway, get back. Get back to, to the Mary. Oh yes, and then we're gonna end the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, that 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 takes me to the master's bedroom. Yeah. So there was that meal, and then you know, oh, my sister wanted to pay. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. They were free. Now, so in case so people it's, wonder it's, what happened. <laughs> As I say, when if I take my sister out. I'm going to pay for my sister. Is I'm even though I'm the younger brother, I'm my father's son. My father trained me to be a man. So all of my sisters know if they're with me. Now if they're with their husband, he's there. Then we're gonna split it. But if he's not there, that's on me. You don't even like for me to pull out my card, you no. know, in the store. Maybe you, you know. You can we it's hard for you to pull out your card. I'm trying to pull out my card and I just pay. Yeah, you, you <laughs> always pull out your card to be funny with me. <laughs> oh, because I'm like, but I mean like it's the same account, but anyway. Same account, but, but it's my money. Some issues there. <laughs> okay. No, it's our money. Yeah. But I mean you, you you but it's just that there's something about it that you don't You're like. under you, you're under my covering. Yeah. I'm taking care of you. Mm -hmm. Your all your needs should be met. Because you you married a man, a real man, mm -hmm. you shouldn't have to worry about those things. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So we're out, the and the and the the waitress oh. has already made an arrangement. But the issue was now the families come together, and you have me and my brother-in-laws. There's a whole lot of testosterone. Man of God, man of excellence, testosterone. And although the waitress has a, a, an arrangement, she is going to quickly mm. submit. Mm -hmm. Even though she had a prior agreement, she's going to quickly submit to the men. And just, I know, my sister, you're upset. I know we had an arrangement, but I got to take the money from the men. Mm -hmm. I got to take their car and give you your car back because they're paying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I believe a woman wants to respond to a man of excellence that is totally driven by communicating the love of God in a language, in a way that she understands, that's willing to lay his life down. She is wired and designed by God to respond to such a man. Mm -hmm. yeah. now, that's why, you know, sometimes you got to stop waiting for your wife to initiate stuff. She, that's not what she does. You initiate. You initiate, and she. You initiate in the right way, and and honor her. Uh, she can't help but respond. And if and if she does initiate, mm. don't you dare turn her down. Don't look. Because like, you might have once or twice. Don't, and after yeah. that, she's gonna shut down. Yeah, but that's it, a whole another topic. We get to yeah, we don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have time. But let's jump into the master bedroom and then I think. All right, we'll talk, talk about the bedroom. master bedroom real quick. We gotta let them go. All right, so the master bedroom is really the ultimate place of intimacy. The naked and not ashamed. Naked and unashamed, um, in in the master bedroom, that is when you see all my faults. You see. Uh, there's no secrets. You see my nakedness. You see my scars. You see, you know, the rolls. You see yeah. <laughs> all that stuff you see. So and and there's there's trust that's the, needed. Yes. They say because I know safe. that you're not going to judge me. Mm -hmm. I can be open with you because uh, in this room, when we're together, uh, you represent a safe place. Mm -hmm. uh, some of us, we have trust issues because we've been hurt before. Yeah. And we are bringing that hurt, and now I'm going to lock you out. I'm not going to fully share with you my uh, my intimate thoughts. I'm not going to share with you uh, talking to married people, my fantasies. I'm not going to share that with you yeah. because uh, you're going to look at me differently. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a safe place. Right. Some of us are bringing things from our previous relationships, but then sometimes the things that have happened in our current relationship that have caused us to uh, build up walls 
that have caused us to kind of close off parts of ourselves because we've been hurt, we've been disappointed. You know, sometimes uh, I've shared my secrets with, with my spouse and my spouse has shared them with his his or her family. Or and, can use them against you. Or can use them against them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so so you're going to look argument. at, once I share with you some things, share with you my weaknesses, then next time there's an argument, you're going to bring up that weakness that I shared with you in an intimate moment to make your point. Right. And sometimes just between the two, or sometimes it's even in a public setting when there are other people around. Yeah. You know, and so when you, once your spouse experiences that, they are going to build walls. So And that trust have, jar, when yeah. it's on E, it's hard to fill it right. back again. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, read, I read a quote that says, trust is... Um, lost in buckets but it's gained in drops wow so it's it's easy, lost in buckets but in buckets but to gain and regain it it's drops it takes a long time it to takes build. a long Trust. time to rebuild. so yeah. we have to be careful and you know there's nothing wrong you know if something happens and trust is broken yes go back on the path of rebuilding that trust but just know it's it's drops it's drops, you know, it's, it's little drops uh, or, mar you know, or marbles that are going in uh, each time. So, I mean, we can talk about the whole. You have some, we have some tools and resources on intimacy. We do. So if you want to yeah. go to our website. Because, I mean, we want to, we want to go deeper. Mm -hmm. I want you to have your best marriage now. Because yeah. the Bible says, you know, when we get into heaven, we're not going to be married. There's not going to be marriage or given marriage. So you better, you better so do it right now. Tired. I don't know. He, God has something better. I don't know what it is, but it's gonna be it's gonna be better because I don't know how He's gonna keep me from coming after yeah. you. <laughs> but uh, oh, oh my goodness! Especially oh. when you're in your glorified body. Good. <laughs> I mean, oh, if, it, if it get, if it gets better than this, right? Right. We know. Because I've already experienced the glory. I went from glory, and there's another level of glory from glory to glory. The glorified body. Woo, all right. Let's go there. Are you okay now? <laughs> yeah, I just had a righteous thought. That's all. <laughs> okay, so I know we, exactly we, what to do with it. We just barely scratched the surface. I mean, we could really talk about this, but there, there are some real hindrances. So we want you to identify why is it you as an individual? Why is it that you are not able to be open with your spouse? And you guys have the discussion. So um, we have a, um, a worksheet on our website. Go to partofiona.org. Um, you can see it in the link there. Um, for the for the for this video here, partofiona.org, and download uh, in the in emotional intimacy worksheet and kind of work through it together um, as as a, as a couple. Work through it together so you can identify where maybe you have built up walls or there have been secrets. You've locked up some things that nobody else knows about. But we want you to begin to open these things up and where there's been hurt, you know, ask for forgiveness. Let there be repentance. Let there be reconciliation so that you can experience intimacy in your relationship. It's God's desire that you and your husband become one. You and your wife become one. And that there are no secrets. Now, the enemy wants there to be secrets. He the operates enemy, in the darkness. He operates in the darkness where there's woundedness. The enemy is right there. So we want really encourage you to go on this journey of healing. But uh, download this worksheet, uh, partnerfuna.org. Uh, go away, says shop. Or there's a link right there in the YouTube um, information for this video. And um, yeah. you have the discussion, then let us know. But we can... Uh, if it's been a blessing to you, if you've gotten anything or you, you know, cracked a smile, you know, hit like uh, and subscribe. And if you have uh, any questions, you know, and I, I, I wasn't really, really looking at the screen, but yeah. uh, if you have any questions, uh, please, by all means. Where can they uh, send the private questions? Well, if they want to send the private questions, then they can they can email us, um, hello at paulandfiona.org. Okay. Or if you have a question that you want to ask right here, um, go ahead and ask the question before we close. Um, remind us to look and see that. Are there any questions uh, we'd love to answer? Good, we see yes, it's single here. Absolutely, it's great to come. I'm glad that you were here. Uh, but if you have any questions, just put, post them on here. Otherwise, we're going to close. And All right. um, you Until meet next us. Time. I, it's Valentine's. Valentine's. You meet us next Monday, uh, same right. time. And make sure you, you you are subscribing to this channel. Uh, you're Share. liking it. You're sharing with you're inviting someone to come uh, next week. Um, so I hope this has been a blessing to you. But um, if you've it's been, been a lot of fun, it has been. So yeah. if you have any questions, I'm not seeing any questions. But if there are any questions, uh, let us know.
But uh, we're going to pray and we're going to close. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this time. Lord, we thank you for the couples yes, and for the singles who have joined us. Yes. Lord, we speak your anointing and favor. Yes. Where there's been difficulty, where there's been uh, some real hurt, mm. deep hurt mm. uh, that have, you know, caused a callousness mm. to develop, a hardness, mm. a resistance, uh, where there's been a breach of trust. Mm. Lord, we pray for your holy healing oil yes. to soothe that area yes. of pain, yes. uh, that area of sensitivity, yes. because you have created us to uh, do life together. You created us for intimacy. You created us for oneness. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where the power is in that place of unity and oneness. And so anything that is resisting that, anything yes. uh, that has us closed up, yes. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you are uh, by your grace, mm -hmm. uh, bringing healing in that area of hurt. Yes, Lord. And I speak, Lord God, uh, that uh, we will commit where we are dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, we will commit to grow and may there be forgiveness yes. and patience yes. Yes. Uh, because we understand that growth is a process and may we uh, give room uh, yes, to Lord. grow together in intimacy. Yes. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Amen. 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 Be blessed. Have a wonderful day, evening. If you're watching this on replay, please type replay uh, in the chat. Let us know. Uh, you can go to polyfield.org and download the uh, intimacy worksheet, and we'll see you next week. Make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification so that you can get the alert when we go live again uh, next week. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you all. Be blessed.